Three of Formula One's top drivers, the top stars, Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen, all potentially got in a bit of hot water back at the Brazilian Grand Prix, but with varying levels of either investigation or not in one case, and punishments afterwards. But no major sporting penalties were handed out. We're going to talk about the approach of the stewards and whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing for Formula One. And I've got all sports F1 reporters Ed Straw and Scott Mitchell here to go over the whole scenario, really. We're not going to get into each incident in great detail because that's been done. But Scott, I think you and I were talking after the Brazilian weekend and it seemed like maybe the FIA's trying to take a bit more of a step back before it's making its decisions. It was very interesting the way that it handled the three separate incidents, which obviously was Hamilton getting in the way of Sirotkin in qualifying, which wasn't even investigated. Vettel breaking the scales when he got angry in qualifying that being called into the Weybridge. And Verstappen for his shove on Esteban Ocon after the race. What did you make of the way all of those incidents were handled? I kind of, I kind of applaud the FIA's sort of intent of taking a step back, viewing the incident, viewing the circumstances around it. The fact that the drivers are people, they're not robots, so they, they're not going to be perfect all of the time. I, I get that. I, I don't necessarily 100% agree with the decisions that they made because you had varying degrees of severity. With I can't help but feel with the Lewis incident, if that had been him balked by another driver, the action would have been taken and that Sorokin would have been branded a loon or an idiot or whatever. I think Vettel was really lucky to get away with basically a, slap, a financial slap on the wrist and a, and a reprimand for lurching forward in his car when there was an official stood in front. And I think I'm not sure 25 grand hits a multi-millionaire very hard no, in the pocket, does it? exactly. And a reprimand doesn't when he's the only one race left of the season. So he now needs, I think, two driving offences in Abu Dhabi for that to have any kind of uh, on-track penalty. And, and then with, with Verstappen as well, obviously he got his... Um, Verstappen got his, his two days of, well, the F1 equivalent of community service, I, I suppose. Um, for OK, he didn't swing a punch or, or anything like that, but you had a few people sort of saying, oh, well, he should get special treatment because he's he's really excited. Oh, why are we trying to do this? It's like, well, that kind of says we're going to give free free reign to, if you're good, you can do whatever you want and behave how you like, and, and that's not really how it works. So kind of, I, I like what they tried to do. I'm not entirely sure they came to the right conclusions, though. Ed, is it dangerous territory for us to suggest that the treatment was given out because these are the big stars? Or do you think that if we'd seen, say, Sirotkin block Hamilton... Ocon shove Verstappen and somebody else pick a midfield driver of your choice, damage the scales, that maybe the FA would have come down harder on them? Uh, you could look at that weekend and suggest that, but I think the body of evidence suggests the stewards are pretty even-handed when it comes mm. to punishing the, the top drivers for things. Vettel got a penalty for impeding sights in Austria for example. So I don't think there's a tendency not to, not to penalise the top drivers. I do think they prefer not to give competitive penalties if they can avoid it. I think that's probably the, the most important thing. The Hamilton one I was a little bit surprised by because it was a, did seem to be a fairly, a fairly clear case. We've seen people penalised for that sort of thing. It was a bit of a misunderstanding because they were all backing up, but that I thought there was a chance there may be something. The vettel Weybridge thing seemed quite extreme and I was very surprised there wasn't a penalty on that because that's ignoring officials' instructions and a safety issue. And it does also mean that in future, let's say you come in in the same situation, it's quite rare that drivers come in needing to get a quick turnaround and then get called into the way which before they set a time. But it does mean if you're in a hurry, you could do that again without there being a firm sporting penalty, which is a little bit strange. But I, I don't I think the stewards are a pretty fair minded bunch. And while I think the wider public perception they might tend to say if Sorokin and Hamilton are involved, automatically the lower profile driver is an idiot. I think the stewards are, are pretty straight up and honest about that. I think the, the, the thing with, with these incidents is they were all open to interpretation. Mm. You could basically uh, take them a different way depending on how you looked at it. So the FIA's position, apparently with the Sorokin Hamilton incident, was that they viewed that as they were both on outlaps. There was no clear case of impediment. But that, that's not the case because you, both drivers were then massively compromised into the penultimate corner, the last real corner, and that affected their run onto the start finish straight. And then we saw Sorokin come back at Hamilton into turn one. So how is that not impacting on their fast lap? Had that incident not happened, then you have a different uh, outcome at the start of the lap. And regardless of whether they impeded their lap, we were really lucky not to have an enormous crash. And Charlie Whiting said, OK, but I think even if we did have a crash, while that would be most unfortunate, the stewards would look at it and say, well, the causes are the same. 
that it was on an outlap, it was a clear misunderstanding, so they wouldn't have acted differently. But I, I'm not convinced. I think consequences always influence decisions in one way or another, and regardless of the crash, that there was an, an impeding on, on their lap. So, personally, I disagree. I think that should have been investigated, and obviously I don't know how they should have gone. I'm not saying Lewis should have got a penalty or Sorokin should have got a penalty, but I'm just surprised that they didn't look at it, and it comes down to that interpretation. I think they interpreted it wrong. I think they do change how they how they approach impeding penalties depending on what happens. If it stops somebody advancing to the next segment of qualifying, they tend to be a little bit more keen to, to penalise it. If it doesn't impact it in the same way, which this incident didn't ultimately, then I think they're a bit more keen to just sort of let it let it slide. This is but this comes back to setting a precedent, doesn't it? This is acting because there's a consequence rather than being proactive. But then all you're doing then is reacting to events. If what if Sebastian had hit the official? When he lurched forward, what he almost Sor- did. Exactly. What if Sorokin and and uh, Lewis had had a massive crash? What if Verstappen's push on Ocon facilitated a punch or a kickback? The, these things do have to be taken into consideration. While you can never preempt, preemptively, completely judge something in a way of, oh well, you know, this could have led to really aggressive action, and therefore we're going to throw the book at you. But you do need to take stock of each individual incident and say, right, could this have? If we let this happen again, and we and drivers are aware that we're not going to be completely stripped with this kind of action, this could have a bigger consequence in the future. It's like when trying to judge how harshly you penalise a driver for a lockup or something like that, like Hulkenberg's mistake at the start of the Belgian Grand Prix, fairly innocuous mistake, huge consequences. So you've always got got to weigh this up, and I just feel the incidents in Brazil, especially Vettel's, with the official standing in front of his car, I think that should have been a case of. OK, the consequence, consequence wasn't bad this time, but we should take be- better and bigger action because we don't want any driver to come close to replicating this in the future in case the consequences are bad. Yeah, I think it's fair enough. There's a dangerous precedent potentially set there for the next time somebody's in a hurry in that situation. And until now, I'd say that the process and the way the drivers respect it with the Waybridge has been pretty good, actually, because it, it can be a frustrating element of your session, even in practice. If you've got a certain run you want to complete before the end of the session, you get called in there. Now, Ed, with the Vettel incident, is there an element that we could maybe applaud the FIA for in that they've given him the benefit of the doubt because it was in the heat of the moment in the middle of a crucial session? I'm inclined not to give the benefit of the doubt there, to be honest. I understand the situation that created it, but as Charlie Whiting said, you do have to factor in that you could get called to the Weybridge. And they've normally been quite stringent on this. If you miss the Weybridge, which is normally just a question of missing a missing a light, indicating you need to go there, you get a reprimand, and three reprimands can mean a grid penalty. And going back into the mists of time, Martin Rundle was thrown out of the Monaco Grand Prix weekend for missing the Weybridge when he was at Brabham, going back a few years there. So it's a, it's a serious thing. And so I don't think that's something you should be especially lenient on. You need to respect what the officials want to happen you need to weigh the cars to make sure cars are compliant although running under weight is actually quite tricky with the weight of the cars <laughs> um, and the, the requirements of the, the rules now so it's pretty unlikely people are going to be they're going to be uh, pulling a fast one but it is vaguely possible but I, I don't I, a driver's job is to stay calm and it's like the way bridge yeah it's annoying but you respect it you go in and waving your arms around and cursing people doesn't doesn't help anything and he created an un, an, a potentially unsafe situation so that was the one that surprised me actually most mm. because I felt it was a, a direct sort of attack on, on an officialdom as it were. I, th- I agree that that's the one that was the worst offence of the three and, and we talk about in the Verstappen incident about setting a precedent and the reason that it, it didn't look like the most violent confrontation you'll ever see. It certainly wasn't throwing a kick or a punch was it but it was about setting a precedent as much as anything else. The, these are role models whether they like it or not and there's enough nastiness in karting and junior formula pressures and, and, and people behaving badly or handling the pressure badly without seeing this. And what you saw from Vettel is another thing that sets a bad precedent because what you've got there is a four-time world champion in a Ferrari basically getting away quite likely with putting an official safety in danger and acting quite petulantly behind the wheel. And that isn't something that F1 should stand for. I should also argue that the Verstappen penalty was a little bit bigger than it looked. It wasn't a sporting penalty, but it's two days of community service, for want of a better <laughs> word. You know, if you wanted Max Verstappen to do something for two days, that would actually cost you quite a lot of money. <laughs> he, he will consider himself probably time poor. There's not that many days off. So actually, that will hit him. And the FIA would probably argue that that can be channeled into something positive for, for motorsport. So 
I think Verstappen for the for the shoving did get that there was a real penalty there. It's probably the the most significant because, like you say, twenty five thousand for Vettel isn't really anything. But two days out of uh, of Verstappen's life, he'll probably he'll feel that. He won't be happy about that. Well, he'll feel it, but no one's going to see it unless they broadcast uh, in in some way, whether they do a press release or something afterwards, photos of whatever he's doing. He's not going to be picking up rubbish from the side of the M40, but he, he might be going and do something in a school or something like that. And what you need to do is you need to send something that visibly shows that that punishment was served. Otherwise, it doesn't matter that he's lost two days of his year. It doesn't matter that he spent two days contributing to some kind of FIA community effort because if nobody sees that he's served this punishment, then to anyone watching, Carters, junior Formula drivers, anyone, us, professionals, whatever, he's got away with that because we've not seen him serve any, serve any punishment. 